what do I need to know about absolute value graphs? Well, here's the deal. Here's all of the important information. Uh, the general equation for an absolute value function is y equals a uh, times absolute value x minus h and absolute value plus k. Um, the vertex is at h comma k. So whatever this number is, um, is the x value, whatever this k value is, that's the, the y value of the vertex. If, um, if k is positive, um, I'm moving the graph up. Um, let me just start with a basic graph so that you understand. A basic graph of an absolute value function is something that looks like this v. This is the most basic graph, um, absolute value of x. Uh, and again, I was talking about uh, k, the end number being positive. If that, whatever that number is, it moves it up or down. So notice how I have plus 1 right here. So if I have that graph, it moves the graph up 1. If that last value is negative, it actually moves it down. So I will put these three graphs beside each other, and you can see um, how the, the, the end value will move the graph up or down. All right. If the equation has... Um, minus a number in here, it moves the graph to the right. If the equation has a plus a number in here, it moves it to the left. And if I go back to my graph and I go inside the absolute value and I uh, add 1 to it, it actually moves it to the left. And if I go inside the absolute value and subtract 1 to it, it actually moves it to the right. And if I put all three of them beside each other, um, I should understand that whatever's inside the absolute value, uh, positive moves it to the left, and negative moves it to the right. What else do I need to know? Um, if A is greater than 1, I'm stretching the graph vertically. If A is less than 1, the graph is shrinked vertically. vertically. Um, what this means is, if I go back to my graph, uh, here's my normal graph. If I make A greater than 1, I am, I am stretching it vertically. And so it's, it's going to be more narrower or a sharper V. If I let my A value out in front be uh, less than 1, uh, it's going to uh, shrink it vertically and make the graph be wider or more flat. So again, I'll put those beside each other, and you can see the difference uh, between uh, what a normal graph is there's a normal graph. There's where A is greater than 1. And here is where A is less than 1. What else do I need to know? Um, the, if the graph has a negative sign in front, if this A is negative, what that is doing is reflecting it over the x-axis. And so here's an example of a negative uh, 1 in front of the uh, x-axis. And a normal graph looks like this. And if I put a negative in front, it reflects it over the x-axis. All right, let's put all this knowledge to use. How can I graph um, y equals absolute value of x? Well, it helps to know the vertex. And because of this, y equals absolute value of x, it's understood that I have a plus 0 back here and a plus 0 here. So my vertex is at 0, comma 0. So this graph has a vertex right here. And how do I graph it? Well, I could do an input-output table. And I could enter 1 and output 1, and enter 2 and output 2, and enter negative 1 and output 1, and enter negative 2 and output 2. And so I have points here and here and here and here. And I now have the ability to graph my absolute value function, and that's what it looks like. So I've done this one. Next one, how do I graph it? Well, what's the vertex? Well, going back to my notes, I don't remember. My, my vertex is, is h comma k. My vertex is h comma k. So the easy part is that this is my k. So it's blank comma 
1. And the hard part that some kids mess up is that H um, is actually, because the formula has a negative sign in it, and because my equation actually has a negative sign in it, my H is always, in this problem, is 1. It's actually the opposite. It's actually the opposite of what's there. So, even, so because this says um, uh, negative 1 right here, my H is actually positive 1. So my vertex is at 1, 1. So here is the vertex of my red graph. All right. Now, I'm going to show you an alternate method um, to graphing this. Uh, last time, for this graph, I did an input-output table. Um, a concept that we should know is slope, and this is the slope. Uh, let me back up. The slope in this graph is 1. So on the right side of my graph, I go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And on the left side of my graph, I'd go up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1. So for this one, for this for the right side of my graph, I actually go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2, right 1. I should be using the word right. And on the left side of my graph, I'm going up one, uh, up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1. And my, uh, my second, my red graph looks like this. And notice that it is steeper. The last thing I should have uh, have the ability to do is write the equation of an absolute value graph. And as long as you understand what A, H, and K are, this should be pretty easy. Uh, H and K I can get from my vertex. And right here's my vertex. My vertex is negative 1, comma, negative 2. This means that K is negative 2 and h is negative 1. So what happens is is that k is negative 2, my h is negative 1, I plug it in, the formula has a minus sign in it, and my a comes from the slope, and my slope is up 2 over 1. So my a is 2. And if I clean this up, the equation of this line is y equals 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 and absolute value minus 2. Hopefully you now have a basic understanding of the information, uh, of, the, of the concepts that are required to, to graph and write equations of absolute value um, uh, equations. And uh, you should now be able to complete the homework problems that I am assigning. Thanks.